State University. When comparing cost, an Athens State degree is a smart degree. Visit athens.edu slash smart. Spark, we're supposed to feel secure knowing the smoke alarm will sound. But it may depend on what kind of smoke alarm you have. And chances are the one you have inside your home right now won't cut it. Tonight, in a taking action investigation, WHT News 19's chief investigative reporter Carrie Marchese uncovers a disturbing flaw in a device designed to save your life. Carrie, this story really is going to open a lot of people's eyes. It definitely is. And of course, there's two different kinds of smoke alarms. There's, of course, a lot of brands of smoke alarms, mm -hmm. but two different types. And I'm going to pass this over, mm -hmm. Elise, if you can hand that to Jerry. Sure. And this one's for you. And Jerry, you're holding a smoke alarm that detects fire flames and Elise, okay. you're holding one that detects smoke did you know there was a difference not until now and you know which one's in your house um, I'm assuming I have a smoke detector in my house okay but what type is the key question and of course that's part of the problem and here's the reality of the situation all smoke alarms are not the same and knowing the difference could save your life a fire in your house is not the time you want to find out your smoke detector will fail More than 3,000 people die each year in residential house fires across the U.S. and Canada. Recent data from the U.S. Fire Administration ranks Alabama number three in the nation for fire-related deaths. Images like this leave our heart heavy. And yet we find comfort knowing we have one of these. But do you have an ionization smoke alarm or a photoelectric smoke alarm? Regardless of brand, there are only two types of smoke alarms. One may not sound off when your life is at stake. Thousands of people have died needlessly in the last uh, 20 to 30 years because of this. Bill Loden is the vice president of the American Society of Home Inspectors. Every home he walks into and every ladder he climbs up, he finds this. It states right here, this is an ionization smoke alarm. It comes as no surprise. 95% of the homes in this country have this type of smoke detector. Ionization smoke alarms. We want you to check your alarm right after this report. You'll likely find one mounted on your wall. And if this information is starting to make you nervous, just wait. WHNT News 19 is taking action to test out these smoke alarms. Now remember, the photoelectric smoke alarm, these detect smoldering slow fires, whereas the ionization smoke alarms, these respond to hot flaming fires. What we're going to do is we're going to fill this aquarium up with smoke, and we're going to test both of these alarms out and see which one reacts first. Inside the aquarium, we place a piece of foam from an old couch, our ionization smoke alarm, and a carbon monoxide detector. We stick a soldering iron into the foam and wait. We're not looking to start a fire, but rather build smoke. At 2 minutes and 45 seconds, the smoke sets in. Right now we're at 6 minutes in, and you can actually still see my hand through this thick amount of smoke. In the meantime, toxic fumes drive our carbon monoxide detector into overdrive. As we hit eight minutes, the detector hits 200. If this was a real life scenario, firefighters would now be wearing protective breathing gear. And then we hear something at 13 minutes. Hold up, it's not our ionization alarm. This is actually the carbon monoxide detector going off, alerting us that the smoke levels have risen to dangerous levels. At 15 minutes, the carbon monoxide detector hits its peak and resets. That means one thing. There's nobody surviving at this point. Finally, we reach in to check out our smoke alarm, and lo and behold, at that very moment. It just now went off. It took 20 minutes for this ionization smoke alarm to go off. Test number two, the photoelectric smoke alarm. Same test, different alarm. The smoke sets in at about three minutes. And before we could get antsy. There it goes. There you go. We're at five uh, minutes and 48 seconds. And uh, our photoelectric smoke alarm has just gone off. End result after smoke is present, ionization, 17 minutes, photoelectric, two minutes and 48 seconds. It's time to share our results with local fire officials. We filled up an aquarium with smoke, had that ionization smoke alarm in there, and yet it didn't respond for 17 minutes. Yes, uh, well, that's 
That's an eye-opening test. And one of the reasons Stephen Butler, president of the Huntsville Firefighters Association, supports the use of photoelectric smoke alarms. I think the industry has, uh, has probably lagged behind, and that's why the IFF took the bold step back last fall and, and tried to urge all the states to, uh, to try to change their standards. And yet, the standard for both alarms is supported by the underwriter's laboratory. UL is the world's largest product safety testing and certification organization. They issued WHNT News 19 this statement. Any smoke alarm that carries the UL mark meets the safety requirements of the UL standard. But in that very same statement, they go on to say, the recommendation today from UL and fire officials all over the country is that having both photoelectric and ionization technologies in your home offer the best level of protection. But fire officials insist smoke is what kills. And since most homes have synthetic materials that give off toxic vapors. Well, the early warning is that much more important. And while some say having a smoke alarm is better than not having a smoke alarm. Well, typically that is true to an extent, but it also can give you a false sense of security. Leaving you to wonder, is this security a deadly delay in disguise? In the last few years, Vermont, Massachusetts, and Iowa have passed legislation either banning ionization smoke alarms or requiring both types be installed in residential homes and businesses. Tennessee is pondering the matter right now. now. The final drawback of these ionization smoke alarms, and this is for the folks at home, is of course they go off randomly in these cooking situations, mm -hmm. which aggravates the homeowner, mm -hmm. aggravates uh, uh, folks. They're a nuisance, so of course what do you do? You pull them off the wall, and uh, that kind of defeats the purpose mm -hmm. now, doesn't it? It does. So is there a, a price difference between the two types? Uh, you know what? In most cases, the photoelectric alarm is about a dollar more. In some cases, two. So certainly not enough to make a difference. And, worth uh, the investment. Worth the investment, exactly. Jerry and uh, we are going to contact our lawmakers and we're going to show them our demonstration and our piece and uh, request action on their part. Great Thanks, story. Jerry. Thanks. Yeah.